In this course, the basic principles of radiation safety are discussed. This module will focus on X-rays specifically, which is a form of radiation. It will be discussed how they are generated, the effects of X-rays on the body, possible hazards, and how these hazards can be minimised. Radiation is defined as the emission or transmission of energy as waves or particles. Many different forms of radiation exist. These are grouped in four categories. Acoustic radiation, consisting of, for example, sound and ultrasound. Gravitational radiation, consisting of gravitational waves. Particle radiation, which is caused by radioactive decay. And electromagnetic radiation, which consists of the electromagnetic spectrum containing visible light and X-rays. Radiation can be divided into two categories, ionising and non-ionising radiation. Both have specific properties and are used for different means. Ionising and non-ionising radiation each have specific effects on the human body. X-ray is a form of ionising radiation, as is particle radiation. Visible light is an example of non-ionising radiation. This module focuses on ionising radiation. Ionising radiation also exists in the atmosphere as background radiation and can have a natural or artificial source. Natural sources include the sun, gravity, and naturally occurring radioactive molecules, such as radon and radium. Ionising radiation can also be emitted from artificial sources, such as nuclear explosions. This module focuses on X-rays, as these are used to create medical images of internal structures of the patient before, during, and or after surgery. X-ray is a form of energy, similar to visible light. X-rays move with a higher frequency and higher energy than visible light and can therefore pass through the body. X-ray imaging should be performed in a responsible way, as it can also have negative consequences for the patient and the staff. In the OR, the image is created by using a mobile X-ray unit called a C-arm, as its shape resembles the letter C. This C-arm is placed over the part of the patient that requires imaging. Obtaining these images is important for many different surgical procedures, for example orthopaedic, trauma, vascular, urology and neurosurgery. These images can provide valuable insights into the internal structures of the patient. Pregnancy or breastfeeding is in general not a contraindication for the use of intraoperative X-ray. Extra protection measures can be taken in order to protect the pregnant woman and her unborn baby. When a pregnant woman needs X-ray imaging, extra effort needs to be put into providing justification. When the use of X-ray is expected to outweigh the possible negative consequences, it can be used on a pregnant patient. When an employee who works with a C-arm is pregnant, her working conditions can be adjusted. For example, she can temporarily transfer to a different location where no C-arm is used. Before the C-arm can be used to image the patient, the device and the surroundings should be prepared for use. The C-arm is connected to the power grid of the hospital and to the monitor, on which the image is displayed. Connecting cables should be placed in such a way that the C-arm can be moved freely. The C-arm consists of two components, the X-ray source and the X-ray detector. The X-rays are formed at the X-ray source, after which they pass through the patient's body. At the X-ray detector, the X-rays are converted to a digital image. C-arm operation is reserved for personnel who have received specific training and the appropriate certification. These are called radiological medical practitioners. Which healthcare professional is certified to operate the C-arm is dependent upon national laws and regulations. The person responsible for radiation hygiene in a hospital is called the clinical physicist. Exposed employees are classified into either category A or category B. 